common sterilization methods on additive manufacturing materials, and it matters. Hey, I'm Marty Johnson, and today we're gonna to look at common sterilization methods on additive manufacturing materials. And why is that important? You really need to be able to sterilize parts to use in medical applications. So when you go in to do these different sterilizations, sometimes, a lot of times, that can degrade different additive manufacturing materials. So at 3D Systems, we really wanted to understand what we're offering and what that means to you and what can we offer you to really improve your applications and open up the capabilities of the technologies and materials. We looked at figure four materials. We looked at MJP VisiJet materials. We looked at SLS Duraform Pro-X materials. So we got a spread of technology so you really kind of see how these materials are going to respond to these different sterilizations. Recently, we just posted a white paper on common sterilization methods across these different standards. It's going to be found on our website. And what the goal was here is to really, like I said, provide you with the right information so that you can make the right decisions. When we look at those sterilization methods, you'll see that we use we tried to span across not just autoclave, but we really tried to hit ETO, we hit gamma, we hit E-beam, we did novel gas, uh, looking at the vaporized parasitic acid. A lot of different types of sterilizations because there's a lot of different types of medical applications. So we wanna be sure that we provide as many options as possible so that you can go in and look at these applications and when you go invest your time and resources into seeing does this material work for your application, you've got a really good starting point and a really good understanding of how these are gonna respond. So in the testing, what we looked at is before and after. We looked at before the sterilization and after the sterilization. And when we did that, we wanted to be sure as we spread that, what's the right information that you can really use to kick off your work that you're gonna do for your application. We looked at mechanical properties and we looked at a vast sweep of mechanical properties. We also looked at dimensional stability. How does this respond in the material when I go through autoclave or when I go through gamma? What is, what is my material response? Do I distort or does my material hold its capability? Also, we looked at color stability and color stability is very important because you don't want to go in as a white part and end up with a part that's stained or, or pinkish or tan or brown. You want to have that clean white look to your materials that it started with before that sterilization method. And lastly, we also looked at cytotoxicity and that would be per ISO 10993-5 because we really want to be sure that the biocompatibility that you get when you run through the cytotoxicity is good after the sterilization because many times in additive manufacturing materials, when you go through a sterilization method, you lose the cytotoxicity, which is not acceptable in most medical applications. So when you go through the white paper, what you're gonna see are the different sterilization methods and these responses. So we really wanna be data-driven. We want the data to drive the decision, not an opinion, not what I think, but what does the data say so that you can make the right decision for your applications? And so we started off with mechanical properties and you can see we have a full sweep of mechanical properties. We look at tensile flex, we look at elongation, we look at HDT, we look at notch impact. We wanna be sure that we're holding the mechanical properties or at least give you the ability to see where the mechanical properties fell a little bit or where they remain stable so that you make good decisions. So when you go through, you'll see the control and you'll see the different methods of sterilization and those particular properties one by one and the results of what that is. And so as you go through, there's a lot of mechanical properties. So there's two tables so that you can really go through and clearly see and differentiate from what your results are gonna be. You're also gonna see the color stability and you'll see an image at the bottom that shows the color stability and not all materials tested kept their color as well. In fact, you can see here in front of me some of the flexural modulus bars and you can see where the different bars, some held the color very well. The Tough 60C white, for instance, it never changed color. It has very good color stability. The Med Amber, however, does have some different changes in it. Some may change only for the higher gamma, as you see in the M2R white. So there's a, it just depends on the sterilization and the material. But as you go through this paper, you can make those choices because you'll see those images and what the response was of the material to that particular standard. And lastly, let's talk about the dimensional stability because dimensional stability is very important, especially when you're putting parts through high temperatures and you're putting parts through steam, you're putting parts through chemical. 
the radiation. What is that doing to your part? And so what we did is we took a part that we could go in and look at the thin wall features as well as some of your more uh, rigid, more solid features. Although this is not solid, we did put some cut out to simulate what you would normally see in an injection molded part where you have the ribbing and you have good structural uh, design. And so how does that respond? Do I get distortion in the thin wall parts? Do I get distortion in the, in the thicker parts? So how do we respond? And so you'll see that data in the paper because you're gonna go in and look at uh, the autoclave and what, how that attacked it or did not. And you'll see that percent change from the parts before they were put into the test. And so you'll see before autoclave and after autoclave, before gamma, after gamma, and you can go in and see what the percent change. And so really great information, really great to see, is that percent change acceptable for your application? And lastly, what you're gonna look at is we did go in and put the ASTM testing for the chemical compatibility for industrial cleaners and things like that so that you can see how your different parts react to those because in a medical environment many times you'll see uh, sodium hypochlorite solutions for instance used for cleaning and things like that so how do the materials handle that when you're cleaning those so you'll get that information as well so i'm really glad to be able to bring you this information so go to the website download the white paper and take a look at the data for yourself and look and see where your additive manufacturing material can be used for a great medical application.